it's in the west of Paris. So this is where the gentry came to ride around their carriages in these scenes. This is the Parc de Monceau. Now I want to get into the financing for just a moment. I'll use this as an example. The area that this sits in is also in western Paris. It's in that same area as the Opera and the La Salazar uh, station. It's in the uh, northern boundary of the 8th arrondissement, or 20 districts in Paris. This is in the 8th. It's the, in the time of uh, Usman, it was known as La Petite Pologne, Little Poland. It was one of the worst areas in Paris. Uh, it was full of uh, thugs, cut purses, prostitutes. Uh, it was a bad area. Uh, it was owned by a member of the former regime, the House of Orleans, uh, one of the royal houses. Osman wanted to get his hands on it. He wanted to clean up the area. Because it was sitting in the middle of New Paris, by the center of New Paris. But this family, which had been replaced by Napoleon III, hated the emperor. So, the, uh, uh, Osman, who was the emperor's guy, couldn't go directly to him. So he used two brothers, who were named the Pereira brothers, P E R E I R A L, in French. Who were both of These guys were financial geniuses until the great crash that we're now going through, they would have been at home on Wall Street. And they made fortunes. And they went through several crashes themselves, but they always came out on their feet. And one of the ways they did this was that in the building out of the railroads that we saw, they started a finance bank. This had never been known in France before. A finance bank is a bank that collects capital and invests in other companies, all right? Um, such that uh, when those companies prosper, the finance bank gets a piece of everybody's action. Now, they had already made a lot of money in the building out of the railroads by financing the building of the railroads. And they created the first finance bank uh, in France, uh, which was called the Crédit Immobilier. Ausmann went to them and said, I want to work a deal with you. And this is the way Ausmann financed a bunch of his own projects. Because the emperor didn't like new taxes, although they had to face them later. He said, here's what I'm going to do. The city wants this land, but it's privately owned. You go to the Orleans family, and you swing a deal. The Pereira brothers do this. They bought this tract of land where this park is for 9,300,000 francs. Osman then said to the brothers, I will deed to you for a pittance the streets surrounding the park. Now, when we develop the park, what's going to happen to the property values? When it was known as Petit Pologne, the bad neighborhood, the average, the square meter, was worth about 480 francs. After they got done, it was worth 1,500 francs per square meter. And so you can see that there was a lot of money to be made here. And these guys made a lot of money, two brothers, and Osman used them uh, quite frequently. They were very efficacious. Anyway, this is what the park looks like today. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, Oh boy, oh boy, I gotta move along. Um, you can't have a great city without clean water. We saw that earlier. There were terrible cholera epidemics, and the cholera bacillus was, it was not known at the time that, that a certain germ caused cholera. But it was suspected that it had something to do with the water. If you remember the map earlier of Ausmann's postings throughout France, I had a happy face down near the Pyrenees. He was posted when he was a sub-prefect in a small town called saint giron which is in the Appalachian in the Pyrenees Mountains. And one thing he noticed there was that the people seemed fairly healthy. And the reason they seemed healthy, he reasoned, was that they were not sure, because the science wasn't known, but he reasoned they were getting good water, and in fact they were getting pure spring water from the mountains. So he remembered that, and he knew that to form, uh, to, 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 to transform a city that had undergone terrible cholera epidemics in 1832 and 1849 in particular, where 20,000 people died in each epidemic, that, that the prosperity of the city could not exist without clean water. Now, there's water going in, and there's water going out. So let's talk about water going in. At the time that Osman took over, there were two sources. One was a canal called the Urk Canal, which was built by the emperor's uncle, Napoleon the Great. It looks pretty good here. 
because this is in a Marne Valley. So, okay, you'll we'll get some uh, fertilizer and some animal droppings that'll go in there, but okay, not too hard. But by the time it gets down to Paris, it's gone through the new industrial zones and it's terrible water. The second source was the Seine River, the river that flows from Paris, and they pumped it up. That was not good water either. So, what was he going to do? He brought in the same guy who did the park, Adafum, who was a, a geographer and a hydrologist, who went farther east out of the city. His first discovery ends up in Champagne. Now, this is not Champagne flowing into Paris, it's actually water. But, you like this, this is called the tree, H-U-Y-S. It's a spring in the Champagne region, and it had two attributes. It had pure water, which flowed at a desirable rate, and it was at a sufficient elevation to be able to build aqueducts to let the water flow by natural gravity into Paris, which is what Ausmann did, and um, he built an aqueduct of 131 kilometers in length, which brought water to Paris in three days at a rate of 1,800 feet per second. I do remember these crazy facts, I'm sorry. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> but it's really a great engineering feat. Yeah, I was not like engineers, like architects. And then, when in 1860, Paris incorporated some of its suburbs, it had gained 400,000 new inhabitants, we needed more water. So they did the same thing. They went to this area, which is in the uh, area of the Marne, very famous battle site in World War I, a place called Chateau Thierry, where American boys were involved. And they brought in the water here, and there you see a period photograph of uh, one of the aqueducts. At the time of Osman, the, uh, the, uh, an Irish Paris resident was getting 29 gallons of water per day per inhabitant. In ancient Rome, under the Caesars, a citizen of Rome was getting 467 gallons of water per day per inhabitant. If you've ever, ever seen some of the Roman aqueducts, you, you can understand why. Husband was not able to do that well, but he more than doubled the quantity of good water, and more importantly, clean water, that the regions were getting uh, by, by this work. The water going in, um, I took this picture in Paris a few months ago. You can see the weather is still nice. Uh, there were over 1,700 public fountains that were established. This one was came later. It was a gift of a Scotsman who loved Paris for the name Guadas. But the Paris that the, the fountains that existed at the time was mine. For public consumption of clean water, uh, still existed. Okay. When Ausmann took office, only about 20% of the houses were attached to the mains. When he left office, 50% were attached. Why? He brought the mains to the new construction. However, it was up to the landlords to bring the water into the house. And if he felt the clients couldn't pay for the extra charges, the renters couldn't pay for the extra charges, he didn't bring it up. So it wasn't perfect, but a lot of progress was being made. Now, tell you what. In about five or six minutes, we're going to hit the magic point. I have, I have some more to show you. If you need to leave, I understand I won't be insulted. I just keep talking, OK? Uh, so I'm going to run a little longer to tell you that. But if you want to bear with me, that's fine. So that's water going in. Water's got to go out. I'm sorry for this. Uh, it's not a pleasant sight. But what was happening was that toilets